in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Dr. Michael Rossi has been pulled away from the Payton County Courthouse, where he was an observer to the testimony of Martin Payton, to look into a strange incident at Doctor's Hospital. One of his patients, young Rachel Wells, was admitted here with a self-inflicted wound, a deep cut on her hand, designed to keep her in the sanctuary of the hospital. But the sanctuary has been invaded by a man who identified himself as Rachel's uncle. Are you threatening me? I'm just telling you the facts, Mr. Chandler. If you consider it a threat, then that's your problem. I'm her guardian. I'll get a court order. No court will take her out of the hospital without a release from me. I'll get another doctor. You do that. He'll examine her, say she's fit. You'll have to release her. You do that, and I'll take you to court. On what grounds? On the grounds you're unfit to be her guardian. <laughs> you just try that, doctor. You go ahead and try. <laughs> Come on, get back into bed, dear. He's gone, Rachel. Gone? Yes, and he's not coming back. Are you sure? How do you know? What did you say? I told him we'd call the police if he did. Now I want you to get some rest, so get into bed. You know, you're really something. No one's ever been able to stop him before. I don't want you to think about it anymore. Dr. Rossi. Thank you. I'd like to say more than that, but I don't know what else to well, say. Well, I, uh, I think that's enough. Weren't you frightened of him? No, and I don't think you have to be anymore. You weren't frightened? No. Come on. Come on, get back in there. Why are you angry? Just because I said what I did? Say, I feel a great sense of disappointment, Stephen. Mr. Harrington. I've waited half a lifetime to see Martin Payton backed into a corner. You had him there. You had him boxed in. Mr. Harrington, Stephen is tired. I'm tired too, Benny. I'm tired of watching that old tyrant force every issue in this town, have everything his way. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Harrington. I didn't know I was wearing your silks today. Why did you let him bait you like that, Stephen? He baited you, and he beat you. Well, that's a very nice phrase, Mr. Harrington. But there was nothing neat or nice about that cross-examination. Now, it, that was something very personal and very painful. Now, I'd appreciate it if you'd just leave us alone. Well, you joined an elite fraternity this morning, Stephen. Better men than you have locked horns with Martin Payton and lost. If you're referring to yourself, Mr. Harrington, you're not half the man my husband is. You're very big on the sidelines. You stand by and you hand out your, your unending advice whether anyone asks for it or not. Now, Stephen didn't conduct this cross-examination for you. Now, if you're so, so anxious to see Martin Payton backed into a corner, then why have you waited half a lifetime? Betty! If you don't know, Mr. Harrington, I'll tell you. You're a waiter. You'll never jump into the mainstream of things because you're always afraid it's going to be too deep for you.
Hope you don't think I feel any sense of victory, Rodney. You're angry. No, Grandfather, I'm not angry. Yes, you are. You think I enjoyed watching Stephen make a fool of himself. I think you got what you wanted. Stephen threw down the gauntlet. I merely picked it up. Thomas, why don't we drive around a bit? I haven't been out of that house for a long while. Let's go. Exhausted. Would you? Would you like some brandy? Yes, yes. Thank you, Hannah. I would. I'm quite tired myself. I think I'll lie down until dinner. Hannah. I did what had to be done. You're trying to tell me that it hurt you more than it hurt Stephen? I didn't say that. No, you didn't. I don't think you were hurt at all. As a matter of fact, I think you came off rather well. It wasn't a contest, Hannah. Oh, Martin, it was. And you were the victor. You always are. Well, if you persist in that analogy, perhaps I wasn't the only victor. I'm on your team, so I won too, you mean? Talk sense, Hannah. I did what was necessary. I prevented Stephen from falling on a very dangerous line of questioning. No one in that courtroom, least of all the honorable judge, would think that anything you said to Ann Howard would have driven her to her death. Forgive me if I'm unable to express my gratitude. I found it extremely painful to watch Stephen humiliated. Would you rather see him destroyed by knowing the truth? The whole truth? The truth. Isn't it strange? In Sunday school, we were taught to know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth will make you free. John, wasn't it? Gospel according to St. John, yes. Martin, there's another verse. Thy money perish with thee. <laughs> Is that a curse, Hannah? Too bad we're living in advanced times. Too bad the age of witchcraft is past. You know, we never burned anyone in Peyton Place. Mr. Peyton's residence. Mother? Yes? Mother, I, uh... I have to talk to you. Can you come over to the... Well, can you come over here? You want me to come to your home? As soon as you can. It's important. I'll be there. Stephen wants to see me. He's had time to think it over. He's given up Hannah, thrown in the towel. Well, it was an unfortunate business, but at least you're spared the testifying. He won't call you to testify now, I'm sure. Martin, if that's true, if that's really true, I'll be grateful to you for the rest of my life. And my money will not perish, and you won't have to burn, Anna. You don't want me to stay, do you? No. Mr. 
Mrs. Cord, come in. Thank you, Betty. Hello, Steve. Mother. I'm so glad you called. <laughs> Betty, you've done lovely things with this house. It's charming. Oh, and those prints, they're, they're wonderful. Would you excuse me, please? Uh, uh, maybe we can talk later, Betty. Oh, uh, yes. Please, sit down. Thank you. How have you been, dear? Everything's been fine. Mother, there's something I feel I have to do. I hope you'll take it in the right spirit. Not think more or less of it than it is. I probably made it harder on both of us by delaying it. I should have looked things over a little more thoroughly before. It's all right, dear. I understand. It was perfectly natural. It must have seemed that Putting me on the witness stand would, well, it would have a terrific dramatic value for your case, and, and you were never one to shirk the dramatic. No, oh, Mother. Please, dear, just, just let me say one thing. I'm deeply, deeply sorry about what happened today. Mr. Payton had no right to humiliate you in court the way he did, no right whatsoever. But if it brought you to your senses, if it, if it paved the way for us to try to understand each other again, then it was a blessing in disguise, wasn't it? Well, Mother, listen. Now, I haven't changed my mind. You are going to have to take the stand. Uh, then why, why did you call me over here if you didn't intend? I'm giving up this house, Mother. Here's the deed. I've made it over to you. We'll be paying you rent until we find a new place. Now, as I started to say, I should have examined our relationship a little more fully before I accepted this house in the first place. The very fact that you gave us such an imposing wedding gift when you really didn't approve of Betty. Please, don't, Stephen, no. Please don't. I'm sorry, Mother. Believe me, I'm sorry. But I'm only interested in one thing now. The truth. I don't care who it hurts or how much. I don't care where it leads, now or afterwards. Do you understand? I don't 